Hi everyone, I'm John Inge, and this is Dungeoneer. Today I want to talk about new players, those poor unsuspecting souls who don't yet realize they're about to get involved in the black tar heroin of gaming. That once you get a taste, you're going to want it all the time. You'll dream about getting together for a session. You'll hook your friends so you can play more games. And before you realize what's happening, you're selling your mother's TV to a guy named Ice Pick to get the newest supplement so you can play as a mimic bard. Actually, that's pretty cool. Before you know it, you're squatting in an abandoned factory downtown, surrounded by miniatures, dice, and dwarven forge. And one day, you catch your reflection in a pool of your own sick and realize you're breaking bad. So welcome, new players. Grab yourselves a beer and some nachos and get ready to fart your way through this game like the rest of us. More and more people are getting into D&D these days because of where it's landed in the media. There's a movie, an animated series, and people even watch professional D&D players, which is bonkers. This thing that I had to hide all my life for fear of getting the hit points beat out of me is now what the cool kids are doing? How awesome is that? I love new players. They come to the table without all the baggage. Guys like me, we have Holy the Grail, Patsy the Squire, Stack to the Sky, Coconut clapping, Searching for Camelot kind of baggage. It's only a model. Shh. What's possible and what isn't has been drilled into my head repeatedly by years of trying to do something cool and stepping on my own dick. So we're gonna go through some do's, some don'ts, some tips, and some dire warnings. Because I am nothing, if not a dire warning. First, let's get some terminology under our belts, shall we? Singular is die. Multiple are dice. Am I the only one around here who gives a about the roll? We use a shorthand to talk about the types of dice we're using. D20, D6, D4. The D stands for die. The number that follows is how many sides it has. So a uh, D20 is a 20-sided die. 6D6 six means six six-sided dice. I was once talking about craps in Vegas and referred to the dice as D6s, and my friend rightfully called me out, nerd. What was I supposed to do? Just say dice? How primitive. Session or game. This is a singular day, night, or 12 hour, Saturday, all day, drunken session of playing, which is part of the next thing, which is an adventure. This is usually a series of sessions that lead to a conclusion, such as find out who's behind the great cattle theft of Mercer County, or destroy the necromancer, or stop the diarrhea epidemic of Kalimshan, or it could be a big ass book by Wizards of the Coast like this one, which is full of adventures that make up the next thing, a campaign. A campaign is a series of adventures usually containing the same characters and players where you advance through multiple levels. Say you have one adventure that takes you from first to third level, your next takes you from three to five, your next takes you from five to ten, and so on. And all those adventures live inside a campaign. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to some facts. After all, who doesn't like getting facked up? What should I bring? Well, you'll need a pencil to keep track of all the crap you pick up along the way, possibly a laptop or other device to look at your character sheet, or, you know, a character sheet made out of paper, <laughs> and any sort of snack that'll turn your poop orange for a few days. Do I need dice? Well, you don't need them, but if you don't want to rely on the dice mojo of someone's crap loner dice, feel free to pick some up. By your third session, you should probably have your own, and the internet is full of amazing ones. My friend Alora and I, are constantly sending each other pictures of the newest dice sets we're obsessed over. Because we are grubby grubby little goblins, and we love Zim, and we must have Zim. Besides, it is fun to get your own dice. It's a way to make your game more personalized when you have a set of dice that match your character and your personality. I got some that are octopus. I mean, come on, there's hardly anything more satisfying than this sound. <sighs> also, I highly recommend getting a dice tray. Moving on! While we're talking about dice, let's go over the different types. This is a d20. You're gonna use this for the majority of your interactions. Wanna hit somebody with your sword? Roll a d20. Need to make a saving throw to avoid that fireball? Roll a d20. Trying to negotiate for the local goblin tribe not to slice off your ass cheeks and turn them into butt burritos? That's your persuasion check, and that's a d20. So when do you use all these other crazy looking motherfuckers? Eh, mostly for damage. Here are the names of the other dice so you know what they are when you see them. The closest you'll ever get to a football. The Long Sorter. Nerd Suppository. Not Blackjack. More painful than a Lego. Should I watch some actual plays? Yes and no. 
Some actual plays can be intimidating with the level of acting or props. It's an impossible bar to set if you're not a professional actor or D&D player, which I'm still getting used to. Professional D&D players, we truly live in a wonderland. On the other hand, you can see funny things like this. Uh, 19, a natural <laughs> one. I can't, I can't do reverse math. You mean subtract. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell nobody, but I actually learned the rules for D&D 5e by watching Critical Role. So maybe watch some highlights on YouTube or TikTok. Just search Emily Axford. You're welcome. Do I need to do a voice? Only if you want to look super cool. No, not at all. If you like doing voices, knock yourself out. Plus, I find it helpful to differentiate your character from you if you're doing a voice, but it's completely optional. Don't feel pressured. I'll be doing a how not to do an accent video coming soon. Subscribe and hit the Taco Bell. What happens if I die? Well, if you die, we chop you into individual servings, seal your parts in Cheetos wrappers, and distribute the pieces of your body in a dozen places across the Southland. No, if your character dies, you don't get punished. Isn't death punishment enough? Well, what are you afraid of? A fate worse than death? No, just death. Isn't that enough? Actually, chances are you're not going to die in your first session unless you have a really, really crazy, vindictive dungeon master or you're playing 12 candles and then everyone dies. But if your character dies in D&D, you just make a new one and get back to playing. Go on, soldier. Get back in there. Walk it off. How do I come up with a character? This might seem difficult if you're looking at this from a rules perspective, but my guess is you've seen a movie or TV show, right? Good. Think of your favorite character type from one of those, such as Horny Wilderness Hunk. My first lesbian. Hungry Shortman. Murder Elf. Stabby Shooty Pretty Pony. That's how you're gonna end it? Rumblor! If you're using D&D Beyond, there's a built-in name generator that links to my favorite name-related website and yours, fantasynamegenerators.com. Some people are gonna try to tell you otherwise, but there is nothing virtuous about making up every name from scratch. Go here, type in the name of what you want, and they have an extensive collection. Hit it a few times, take the highlights, mix and match, and boom, you're done. You've got a name, you didn't have to spend all day with it, you could go about your business having joy in your life. Do I have to read the books? Please, for the love of God, no. I mean, unless that's your thing, then read till you're blue. But I actually want you to play this game. If you have to read a thousand pages of textbook to do that, are you ever really going to? If you have a good DM and DMs, this is a challenge to you, they will help you make your first character. The person next to you at the table will help you remember which die to roll. Hint, it's a d20. It's almost always a d20. All you have to do is bring your imagination and a desire to kill monsters. Am I going to piss off everyone at the table because I'm new? Okay, my first instinct, as you may have guessed, is to make a joke or bring some sarcasm to this answer, but I want to take it down and get serious for a moment. Listen to me, booby. You're not going to piss everybody off. Your friends invited you to their game because they want to hang out and have fun with you. That's the majority of what happens in a session anyhow. We've all struggled with which die to roll or what our spells do or how the hell does proficiency bonus work. We've got your back. And if someone does get mad at you for not knowing the rules or being new in general or they lose their patience, send them to me. And I will personally kick them straight in the dick because I just got these brand new dick and shoes and they are hungry for some dick. You have a fresh perspective on the game. Me? I'm old, crusty, and jaded. I'm host to a certain set of limitations that only someone who's been playing since before they had two digits in their age can have. You don't know what you can and can't do, so knock me out with your crazy requests. I love it. For example, I had a brand new player. The guy himself was really into nature and wanted to be a beast master hunter on the hunt for an animal companion. So the group's chasing bandits in a carriage and they roll in the complications chart available soon on our Patreon. And suddenly an owlbear charges out of the forest chasing them. What is that again? An owlbear. So the guy looks at me and says, I want to jump on the owlbear, ride him up to the bad guy's carriage, and make him attack it. The room goes silent. The other players slowly turn to me, and the question in everyone's eyes, are you gonna let him do that? My response? F yes. I warned him he was gonna have to roll really high to pull it off, and he says, 
Let's do it. He, he didn't actually talk like that. Athletics check to jump on the owl bear. Natural 20. The table goes crazy. Everyone's beside themselves, but he has no idea what just happened. That like a natural 20 is so rare because it's one of his first rolls ever. But now he needs to make a really hard animal handling check to have control over the thing, or it's just gonna pull him off its back and devour him on the spot and probably get indigestion from eating a dirty hippie. So he picks up the die. Rolls it in his hand for a second. Everyone's staring at him. He throws it on the table. He tumbles end over end and comes to rest on, I sh thee not. Another hot dang natural 20. It was epic. And I never would have even thought to try because that's nigh impossible. I mean, uh, you have to have the right DM. But I have digressed. The biggest question new players seem to want to know, but are a little reluctant to ask. What? can I do? Well, you can try anything. You're gonna say, I'd like to cast a fire bolt at the hell clown's head, or I'd like to approach the innkeeper and see if they have any special company on offer. Or I'd like to jump off the stairs, swing across the room on a rope holding the chandelier, attack the bad guy with my rapier as the chandelier smashes down on top of the five flunkies at the table. <laughs> Hell yeah, you do. Don't get caught up on the rules. Just describe the thing you want to do and your DM will figure out how to do it mechanically and what you need to roll. And then you're going to roll a what? A D20! Yeah. If an NPC talks to you, you can talk right back. It's like magic. The world is real. I like to start my players going into a tavern where I have someone ask them what they want to order directly to the players, which often makes them make this face. It's my favorite face. This is your chance. Try out a voice. Ask for a tankard of ale, a snifter of brandy, a boot full of beans, whatever tickles your fancy. Just remember this next rule. Don't destroy immersion. It ruins everyone's fun when we're all trying our best to lose ourselves in the game and you keep reminding us it's not real. Yeah. We know it's not real. The kitchen's right there and I get to go to the bathroom and a toilet and not in a bag of holding. A group of you have been on the road for some time, seeking your fortune, fighting monsters, and collecting treasure. But the last week has seen little action and much rain. You open the door to the Drunken Ox Tavern, and warm air hits your face. You'd almost forgotten what heat felt like. A dwarven woman, shirt sleeves rolled up past her elbows, her beard tied back and out of the way, holds ten tankards in her arms as she runs past. Take a seat in the corner. What can I bring you? And you respond. Uh, I'll have a large pepperoni and a corona, bro. We work so hard to create immersion, and if you do that, you're ruining everyone else's fun. Especially the DM, who put a lot of work into this game and then made the mistake of inviting a trash person to their table. So anytime someone else tries to poke holes and remind us this is just a game, they're just a big old butthole, and nobody wants a big old butthole. I mean, how would you keep your poop inside? Don't get falling down drunk or stoned. Yes, it's fun to have an adult substance at the table. Some games I've been involved in, that was the entire idea. Let's get drunk as Dutchman, roll some dice, and murder everyone in the town. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think the DM knew what he was asking for when he invited us. If you get completely blotto, you're gonna commit the number one sin at the gaming table, and I've already mentioned it a couple of times, don't ruin other people's fun. And trust me, if you are falling down drunk and you can't take your turn, you don't remember the rules, you don't even remember who's at the table, everyone's gonna be mad at you and you're ruining our fun. Trust me, I know something about this. Keep your head about you or don't imbibe at all is just a good ground rule. But hey, I ain't your daddy. You have every right to get kicked out of your gaming group at any time you want. I'm not gonna stop you. So I say to you, new player, come, sit at my table, drink of my beers, feast of my Cheetos. And if it's not for you, hey, nobody's perfect. But if it is, well, also nobody's perfect. But at least you can numb the pain of being a messy human around the table with your fellow messy humans while murdering monsters and robbing graves. And that's all for now. Just a reminder, there are links to the Dungeoneer Patreon below, and don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that stuff, share it with your friends on the socials. Because if nobody watches this, put a lot of work into it. I'm just gonna start drinking again. Nobody wants that. Except maybe the Jameson's company. They'll be fine. I have friends. They're pulling their weight. And that's them. 
So until next week, check this out. Happy Jack's RPG Podcast is a great independent creator. They do a top-rated advice show and produce actual plays in lots of different systems. They never take sponsorships, so you know they're not giving you a heap of heap of bullshit. They've been going since 2009, and even I make the occasional guest appearance. Check them out on YouTube and Twitch, and all their content is available as audio-only podcasts. Your life will be better off for it. Guaranteed. Not a guarantee.